Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to the first lecture on higher algebra K3 by Professor Geja Sankar. This is actually the fifth lecture in the K3 in total AT series. But uh, as you know, this is divided into several sections. Therefore, this is the second section in the part one, algebraic K3. And Professor Geja is going to give you an introduction to the construction of uh, in plus construction and its application to higher algebra K3 computing the K3 spectrum. Over to you, Professor. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Dipankar, for organizing this. I realize it's a lot of effort. Thanks. Okay, so we start. Yeah. So my plan is that so today I would definitely like to definitely make this definition. So we have some So we have some ring R. And I will see there. So from this, we'd like to construct this topological space. VGL R infinity and also VGL R, VGL infinity R plus. And this would be the one who homotopy groups would be whose homotopy groups or whose higher homotopy groups these are in case of rings higher algebraic k groups of Rings. I mean, one could rewrite it in a way, but let's say. Yes. Okay. So, as I understand, we have already gone through uh, these three. Maybe three groups or two groups? Two people have done. K zero. Three groups. K zero, K one, and K two. Okay, good. So these groups we have already seen. So. Uh, when I describe this space, it's actually a CW complex, then this we have to arrange somehow because it's the way it is, it's path connected. And this would be, in a way, by construction, a uh, fundamental group of this, the CW complex, would be K1 of the ring. And then K2, okay, one can then manage to basically go through why somebody should define this space in a way that you want to take its somatopic groups as higher algebraic K theory of the ring. So that is more to do with studying group cohomology of the, the groups, GL infinity R or it's finite versions. So okay, so this is the plan. Let's hope that I reach here today. So the things that I would like to maybe quickly go through, if you already know, would be simplicial sets. Do you have good memory of this or enough memory of this or not? All of you, most of you. If not, then I will quickly recall. So, what are simplicial sets? So, here is this setting B. This is a setting B. Of finite ordered sets. Okay. So, we have 0, it is a single point, 1, which is 0 and 1 right this way and unique this ordering 
then q so 0 1 2 there are these three objects in here and in general we have n yeah. so this is category in so this category of finite ordered sets so objects are the ordered sets and in this category morphisms are order preserving maps so and the m order preserving maps or these are morphisms So a simplicial. So this is called a simplicial category. A category of finite ordered sets. So that we want to look at it, and this allows us to define various functors, in fact, covariant, contravariant, to any category. Yeah. So a simplicial set. Is a so this one is contravariant variant functor from this category delta to the category of sets. So that would mean it would denote it by x. So x should come with in a way you can think of it as set. Bunch of sets indexed by the these sets are indexed by the numbers. So we have x zero, x one, x two, and all the and different maps that you would get depending on how many ordered maps you have from one to the other. And the the direction here would be the wrong one. It is contravariant. Yeah. So I'll draw just one arrow each. Way, but this will be how many arrows will depend on how many maps in here. Yeah. So a simplicial set is you could think of as this diagram of sets, this graded set in a way. We have this grading together with certain maps to them. So it's, this is simplicial set. In fact, more generally, there are these simplicial objects, uh, but maybe you don't need. For me, so I wouldn't go into it. Yeah, and then also there are the co-simplicial spaces, so we will need them also. So these are now these are covariant functors from delta to category of topological spaces. Maybe you put some restrictions like compact region related what now, but so these are. Covariant functors from here to topological spaces. So this time, let's say, well, nothing wrong in using x at the end. But then, so these are sets and maps. Okay. So this time, now we have x again. These are topological spaces. Maps going the same way. And continuous maps. Okay. So, some quick examples one could see. But before examples, let's try to see some specific maps in this category. Markedims in this category itself, which kind of generate a class of markedims in delta, and that would mean which basically give you a generating set for all these maps in some sense. Yeah. So here are the particular kind 
of maps called co-face and co-degeneracy maps in this category. So here are the co-face maps. So these are denoted by di, and they go. They are maps between the, these kinds of ordered sets from n minus one to n. So there are n plus one elements in this, and n elements in this, and so these are ordered sets from zero to n minus one, zero to n. And what these di's do, they basically omit i from this. Yeah. So omit i, and i is running over this. So, so co-face map seems like in, in a way it picks up a face in here. Yeah, I, I just said if you want to look at it, and you can pick any of the faces, which would be in here. Uh, so if you look at it, it would be kind of face opposite to that vertex coming from any of these indices that you see. Yeah, and so yeah, and then there are the co-degeneracy maps. These are S I and they go from let me see, they go from the N to minus one. Okay. And this one repeats I again I range it here. Professor, there seems to be some noise. Oh, okay, just give me. Is there a fan turned on or something? Okay, just give me a moment. Is it any better? Yeah. Okay. Like it. Okay, yeah, so we have. Sir? Hello? Uh, sir, I hear a question. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, for this co-face maps, uh, would not this i range from 0 to n? Otherwise, we are losing this nth face, right? Uh, okay, so uh, let me define and then we see. Yeah. The thing is, there is a reason why we call them faced. So in, uh, maybe let me, let me try to remember. No, I think that's, that's correct. So uh, let me write them and then I, uh, I give you an example. Yeah. I think these in indices are correct the way they go. So, yeah, the region of this indexing is the following. So, this one repeats i. So, for example, let's say d, we have d0, d1, and d2 from 2 to 3. So what does it do? So we have 0, 1, 2, and we can write them this way. So d0 will be 1, 2. So yeah, it omits i and then other things, then it has to shift that way. Yeah. Like one more. So this will leave out one, so zero. This becomes two, this becomes three. And uh, yes, zero, for example. So maybe this way. yes, zero, yes, one, yes, two, three, two, 
2. So here, the 0, 1, 2, one more, and this 0 will repeat. So 0 goes to 0, and then this will go to 0 as well, and you adjust that way. So why we call them cofaces and co degeneracies? A region is this. So we have these topological spaces, delta n. Yeah, just these are the ones which, at least in some versions, you use to find your similar cohomology. Yeah, in simplicity, a geometric in simplicity. So how do they look? Let's draw some. For example, our delta one would be uh, this unit interval, but put this way in R two, R three. Yeah. So this is our delta one, and Delta 2 would be here with this one also and all these. Okay, so this is this simplex. And then we have the co simplicial spaces. So we form co simplicial spaces. Means you take Delta zero should be this point. Delta one is this line. Delta two is this triangle, and so on. And then, so look at degeneracies. So degeneracies are going to be, for example, here. So we have in this case, yeah. So okay, it's possible. I have change the directions but let's see so yeah so face okay face operators so here so at this face yeah so co face maps so this would give you the maps in the same directions so here we call them maybe co face maps like Face maps. So, for example, we get D zero, D one. Let's try to look at this one. So, what should this do? From here to here. So, the idea here is that we should. So, this is just uh, this. This subset in R. Let's look at R3 and we want to map it this way to something to this delta 2. Yeah. So D0, what will it do? It will leave out this. So in a way, it will end up picking up this face. Yeah. So it will pick up face opposite to delta to, to this zeroth vertex in here yeah if you write it as 1 2 d or v0 v1 v, v2 so there is a map here to here uh, which so i wouldn't describe them in details you can try to read about them yeah but uh, so this map basically here, this one simplicial space or this delta one in this co simplicial space, it gets mapped into delta two as a 
space opposite to this first this zeroth vertex through d0 and in case of d1 it gets mapped to this this vertex and maybe it gets mapped this way yeah so it gets mapped into here so well so whatever would be the regions of this name and whatever you feel like is being missed so this is the right one okay so the point is in this case so your co-face maps end up picking a face opposite to the corresponding vertex if you will here so here there are if you are in delta n there are uh, delta n minus 1 there are n vertices and here there are n plus 1 vertices n plus 1 faces also so uh, I mean n plus 1 one dimension less faces so it will pick up the faces opposite to corresponding vertex whichever index you you are leaving out okay that's how it is and the degeneracy map so this is delta 0 in fact uh, you can write them all yeah but uh, i wouldn't write them but you can write them maybe i'll just explain only d0 so that so this is image of d0 okay and okay so this would be image of d1 and then yeah so this is coface map and the same way you get maps this side corresponding to s0 s1 so these are co-degeneracy maps in the sense uh, they collapse the vertex so see the, here there are these two so they collapse this one So the one which gets repeated, this I many times I forget which way the collapsing happens. Let's try to remember. So they collapse the face okay, so maybe to the so everything to the yeah, so S0 it should do what it should do would be it will collapse it will map the whole thing by collapsing everything to this face opposite to this vertex that's why it's called degeneracy or co-degeneracy map yeah so again for these maps is uh, there, there is explicit formula for all these maps you can write down you can go back and check but so this is the reason why they are called co-degeneracy here because in a way they are pinching they are making your delta n degenerate and uh, the other one, S1, will collapse this simplex on the edge on the face opposite to vertex 1. And in case of delta n minus 1 to uh, delta n to delta n minus 1, the same thing will happen re relative to those vertices. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is the reason why they are called co-facage, co-degeneracy. In some sense, these maps, if you look at them in a covariant way, they end up picking up a certain a corresponding face or they end up collapsing things corresponding to that vertex. Yeah. And I mean, you might want to say why this is called co simplicity why this is not called co-simplicial topological space and other one I mean I don't know see this is covariant functor and still we are calling it co-simplicial space and the simplicial sets are contravariant and we call them contravariant I don't know it's just the way things are okay yeah yeah so this is one example one very important example delta n Okay. 
they cause some special space yeah and then there are lots of these examples of simply cell sets so here you see some geometry also how so it's actually uh, you start with the point as delta 0 this interval as delta 1 this two simplex as delta 2 and so on and then different maps with some property like how can you view them yeah and yeah so next thing would be some example of simply cell set so these are very good example for example so you have all the ends objects in here at yeah, the simply cell category and they define you can denote them just by n or arm in delta from so you know the by uh, in a way so representable functors represented represented by these objects in here this would be okay so you can try to write what these are for maybe n equals 0 n equals 1 so you, you see what what you get so these are important examples of little right and the point here is we are going to construct many simply cell sets that are in a way naturally occurring and these are also natural but maybe once you study this discrete stuff then you see that they are natural as well but we are going to construct some of the simply cell sets not the some simply cell sets which are useful in our study of the k groups okay yeah do you have any questions up to now if not then just give me a moment i'll start again Water. Okay, so yeah, so th this is very quick def uh, reflection for you of what simply cell objects are, what co simply cell objects are. I would say you go back and try to look at some of the uh, for details, some of the books. And so yeah, we are going to use these ideas to construct our space BGL infinity R. So the setting for that is what we have is classifying the space of a category so by category i would mean mean a small category yeah So what is this? So the idea here is given a small category
we associate this nerve of C, a simplicial set. And how do we define this? So it's a simplicial set. So you need to tell, uh, so in a way, set graded over non-negative integers. So you have to tell what are the various graded pieces. So maybe N zero C the set of objects. Okay. set of morphisms so these are set of composable morphisms pairs of composable morphisms and so on. So, nth graded piece should be set of n tuples of composable morphisms. Yeah. And then here different maps between them. So, for example, here our bi, this should tell us map between these sets. Yeah. So here you have a, a string of n morphisms, n composable morphisms, and you want to get a string of n minus one composable morphisms. And the thing is, you just compose them at ith spot. Yeah. So how, how will it go? For example, say zero. So okay, uh, zero. Let's say we have a zero, a one, a two, a three. Some. So this would be in in three C, and it has to be sent to. something in n to c. So through for example then in this case it would be yeah d0 d1 and d2. So what you do to define this so in case of this So we compose them. So yeah, if we write, so we we compose them. The, so yeah, so this one is left out. So in a way, we start here, and so what we do would be. So this gets mapped to a zero to a two, and this is this composition. Compose at this these two. For d0, okay, and then you don't do anything to this one. Yeah, this is for d0. Let's say yeah. So the same way, let's say from here, if you want, yeah. so this would be for d0. So for d1, what we do, we we start composing these two. So don't do anything to the first one. So it remains and we compose these two for D1. Okay. So that's how we define morphisms uh, corresponding to the cofaces. 
and corresponding to co-degeneracy at corresponding steps you add identities yeah you see for this we insert identities so for example let's stick to this uh, n3 n2 situation so we have yeah we situation did this so yeah so we took this now we have okay let's say we have 3 3 2 this 0 this 1 this 2 so the so we want maps from n to c n3 c and in n2 what do we have so we have a pair of composable arrows maybe a0 a1 a2 yeah and this for example relative to s0 has to go to something in here so at this spot we put identity identity and then we continue yeah. and for s1 we put identity at this spot Yeah, so this is how you turn this graded set taking strings of composable arrows in, in C into a simple cell set. So this is the nerve of a small category. So from this, how do we get a topological space that is what you would call classifying space? C is what we call geometric realization of not just nerve but any simplicial set. So classifying space of C is the geometric realization on the simplicial set uh, can see okay so how did this work so maybe i'll quickly recall how realizations work in for a general simplicial set, what is its realization? Yeah, so let's see. So let's say we have So x is some sim simplicial set. So the definition, I will quickly write it. It goes like this. I mean, you could describe it in many ways. You could describe it in a category theoretic way as a certain uh, limit. But here is very explicit description. It's, it's useful, so I'll do it this way. So look at these spaces, xn. cross delta n okay 
what are these so this is just a set so think of it as discrete space and this is our uh, geometric n simplex that i had described in the beginning like line put that way control put that way then triangles and then three triangles and so on so this is our yeah so here so xn is discrete and delta n geometric n simplex Okay, so I just in the beginning when I described this co-simplicial space delta, then I described this. Yeah. So we look at this, take this disjoint union of these, okay, and then put a put an equivalence relation on this. So and what is the equivalence relation? It's generated by these identifications in here. So yeah, so So there are these two kinds. So take x in x n minus one and y in delta n, and then identify these. So basically, you are identifying things from x n minus one cross. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Let, let me write on the net. Tell you how you are identifying things. So x is in here. Now uh, we have if we apply, yeah. So yeah. Yes, I y would be a map from delta n. Remember, it's co-simplicial, so it would be map from delta n to delta n minus one. Yeah, so this would be something in x n minus one times delta n minus one. So identify this with uh, you apply S i to this, you will end up being in x n, and then identify and then this pair. Okay. So relative to your maps, your simplicial and co-simplicial maps, simplicial maps in here, co-simplicial maps in here, there is this identification that you make coming from uh, degeneracy or co-degeneracy. Okay. So certain part of xn minus one cross dn minus one gets identified with xn cross dn, a delta n. So that's one kind of identification and then there is one more kind coming from the co -facet. So in this what you do, so you have to write two times because indices don't match. So here take x in xn and y in here. identify the following so we have x is in xn now if you apply coface to this you end up getting something in delta n so d i y by the way, I might have written indices as super or sub, doesn't matter. You make your choice and stick with them. Or you can use the same as long as you know what you're doing. Yeah. So this is something which lies in xn cross delta n, and you identify it with now if you apply d to this, 
uh, we get something in uh, x n minus one. Yeah. So these identifications we name. So this one lies in I mean it's if somebody quickly wants to see how these work, maybe it's not a good idea. I would say choose some simple examples and try to write down, for example, so here is one good exercise that you could try to do. So we have defined these simple cell sets even without doing much. The ones given by these. Yeah. We have this. Counter. So these are simply cell sets. Yeah. So I'm not using different notation, but the thing is the ones that are represented by these objects in your PTB delta. So for zero, you try to write down what do we get, and uh, I would say you should get point. Yeah. So first write down uh, corresponding to this delta zero as a simply cell set, what do you get? What are all the simply seed? And then you write down your this big disjoint union and then see how identifications work. But the point is it should give a point. Then look at this one. So this also write down and see what do you get. So yeah, and this gives something which is actually homeomorphic. Yeah. So, homeomorphic to point, and this one will give something homeomorphic to unit in trouble. I might give you if you try to identify this way. It doesn't matter. It might you, you might get this one, your delta one. And others, I don't know if you can quickly see them, but again, this is something one can prove that. So, from this, we look at this simply cell set, it will give as uh, through realization this n yeah, geometric n simplex. Yeah. So this is actually interesting and easy to see, but at the same time, it tells you how to look at different things, if, how to work out all the details. So it's a good exercise. Yeah. Others need some running around to like this verification. This, of course, is very easy. But so you should go through them. Yeah. Do you have any questions? So we have the classifying space for a category, right? So as uh, now we have classifying space also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just like classifying space of a group classifies principal G bundles. Mm -hmm. So can we say something for classifying space of a category? Yeah, sure. So, uh, okay. A general category. A uh, general category, I don't know. I mean, so if you choose your classifying space coming from a reasonably good source, then you can say something in terms of classifying space actually classifying bundles of some kind. But if you have a general category, then I don't know. Yeah, general small category. What so uh, not uh, so maybe general category is too much. But yeah. if we rest, uh, so are there examples of? Uh, yes, so categories so that, with some restrictions yeah okay so maybe just wait so for example this bgl what happened to this yeah so yeah okay this is a good question and the point is the examples that we can really say something serious about are examples of the kind that you have some group and then from groups you form some category 
so one way is I don't know that a group can be turned in category in many ways, but the one way that's useful in this business is you turn a group into a category with just single object and all the group elements and morphisms and composition would be product of the group. Then this is a category, small category, and then you look at its classifying space. So take its nerve and apply your re realization functor, get something. So that exactly classified uh, maybe principal G bundles. Okay. So this classifying space obtained from a group, thinking of it as a category, that does classify the principal uh, G bundles. So that is a theorem, but it, it works. Yeah. Does it answer yeah. your question? Yeah. 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 In uh, in general, I don't know if you. Sometimes you could probably say more things, but I. Yeah. It depends on the way we start with the category, how much we understand about that category. Yeah. Okay, so what we have, so we define geometric realization and we have defined NURB of a category. So now we have a quick definition of what classifying space is. So we have so category should mean small category or you choose some small model of it. Okay. Category C has The geometric realization. Right. I hope I use this symbol. Yeah, so usually given a simplicial set with this absolute value symbol, this is geometric realization. And this is a, a CW complex because you use CW structure here and all the maps. I didn't write them down, but they are simplicial maps and this is all these are discrete. So, yeah, so this gives a CW complex. Okay. So we have this geometric realization of nerve of C okay. and we denoted by BC. So it's a CW complex. And lot of K theory happens in this way and K theory usually classified uh, in a way depending on yeah what do you want to classify you can do some tweaking but like you can change your groups some take particular groups like take GL uh, take, for example take unitary group take orthogonal group take a special orthogonal group there are lots of groups and then you think of these categories and then see what do they classify. So you get lots of these uh, classifying ob objects and they classify certain kinds of, for example, certain kinds of fiber bundles. Yeah. So here then, now for a group, group G, so we This category, you know, could just like G or maybe G tilde category with single object, then let's say star and set of morphisms. All the elements of this group G. And product is composition.
¿no? Okay, so so this is category, and this will give us this nerve of G tilde will give us this the G tilde yeah. and well instead of keeping this baggage of field, I will just write it BG. This is classifying the space of a group. So I would say group, but I would let, let me say of a discrete group in the sense. So here, the way we have thought of this category, so there is no topology in here. Yeah. So we took discrete topology on, on this. So classifying the space of a discrete group. Yeah. Okay. So of course it's a CW complex. There is a quick remark. I don't do much about it, but maybe you should think about it. Yeah. Let's say your G was a let's say G had a reasonable topology to begin with. So it was a topological group. Then you shift your language a little and shift your context a little, and instead of this, yeah, where was it? So your yeah, so topological group. Then think of this BG tilde as a yeah. Uh, it, Simplicial space, yeah, not just simplicial set. Okay, because it's topological group, and the way you have defined things, you get a so you keep track of the topology, yeah. So you get simplicial space here, and in real realization. Uh, we use the topology that this G G had. So instead of taking discrete topology on the sets, we take the topology that we already have here. Yeah. From G uh, in the simplicial in this simplicial yeah. In, What do we say? In the simplicial set components of BG. And yeah, so this disjoint union, you, instead of giving discrete topology to the first factor, you use the topology and give that of topology and then use quotient space of that topological space with the same relations. Yeah. So let us say this time then we again get something. So our realizations would change now because our the topology and the space had changed. Yeah. So this gives a realization which takes takes into account this topology from G, yeah. Topology on G and, and then so here is one thing. So let us try to write this way. So G write it at delta with discrete topology and G with the topology that G had. 
let this be the continuous map where delta means discrete topology yeah and then uh, so this will induce map on g outright with delta to bg where this bg definition we have taken into account the topology yeah realization of yeah realization with of simply cell space instead of simply cell cell and this one is just realization of the simply cell cell So properties of this map, they form this body of know, literature under the name of milner friedlander conjecture. Like is it uh, weak equivalence with maybe finite coefficients or in what way? Then you can try to read about them. Milner friedlander conjecture. Say uh, with maybe mod p coefficients, this is homology isomorphism. So this is just a remark and it's useful in the sense uh, all these groups like unitary groups or orthogonal groups in classical topology you look at this space with which is realization of simplicial space and it does classify your topological vector bundles yeah so algebraically you get different theory if you just look at this and this side would be algebraic k theory for example if you just look at gl infinity of real numbers that group then in a way this gives something about how the two maps work yeah? okay good so uh, okay, let's see how far i go today uh, how much time can i take um maybe 20 minutes more okay thanks yeah, at least I would like to finish this part and then maybe next time we just apply this to. So there are a few things that we should now quickly go through once we have the definition of uh, classifying space of a pedigree. Yeah. yeah. So here is this remark on terminology. So C, you can call it a connected, path connected. Yeah, connected if B, B, C is, yeah, or C is, okay, contractible if B, C is, etc. So, using this space, you can take the same property of a small category as well. Okay, and then uh, here is one useful, in fact, couple of useful facts. So this construction is functorial. Yeah. Okay, you can quickly check. So we have functors, then 
Oke. Sembilan. Ya. Si. C to D Enter We have Map If we are nerves Map of simplicial sets I didn't define it but These are functors yeah? So map of simplicial sets Should mean Transformations of those functors Same way Map of co-simplicial space edge Co-simplicial objects In any category Should mean transformations Yeah So We have Bf, Bc2, Bd, continuous maps, yes, in fact cellular maps. There is only one cellular map. Yeah. And what does this do? So now you can say a functor being homotopy equivalence if this induced map is a homotopy equivalence. Or you can say uh, any property like uh, homology isomorphism or homology at a certain spot isomorphism, whatever things you want to study. Yeah? So, is homotopy equivalence if BF is? Yeah. Just a moment. Yeah, so it, it can be a so. So then you can say functor is homotopy equivalence. So now here is one result that if you have two functors and a natural transformation, yeah, then uh, it induces yeah a homotopy of the two maps. Yeah, so here is a homotopy of the two associated maps. I would call it the mark, but then go. Let's say eta f to g The functors from C to D induced a homotopy of the two induced maps. And how does it work? So here is a quick hint. So think of a natural transformation. You can the one can view a natural natural transformation of functors as this functor. And vice versa. equivalent to a functor well, from this category. So we have category C and we have this category 1. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. So this is well, think of it as category our uh, 
uh, this part. So it's a set with two objects, or it's a category with two objects and a unique non-identity map. So this is basically our uh, object one bar in the simplicial category delta. And we are thinking of it as a category itself this way. That yeah. now it has just these two objects and one non-identity morphism given by this ordering. Okay. So a natural transformation of functors from C to D is equivalent to a functor from C cross one bar to D. This I would let you check. Maybe let's say H. Okay. So every time natural, natural transformation is given, we have a functor. Functor will give. Uh, okay, so here maybe I should be careful. So if we are given a functor here, then it will give two functors and then a natural transformation between them. So one should be maybe careful as to. So from eta f to g we get this. So a functor. Okay, one could write like this with h restricted to c plus zero. So this you can identify with c. Should be f and h restricted to c plus one should be g. And the region of this is so classifying the space of this would be the product and so on. So, yeah. so the natural transformations give this and now use the fact that maybe in even in general generality C1 C2. Take two categories, take their product, and classifying the space would be yeah, it would be homotopy equivalent to the product. Okay, so then we perfect this in general, and B. This is you work it out, and this is just control 0 1 and so on. So every time you have a natural transformation of two functors, the induced map on classifying the spaces, induced maps, they are uh, homotopic. Okay. So th this is very simple but uh, very useful. So in particular, this tells us that if we have adjunctions of categories, then they induce homotopy equivalences yeah? of those categories or uh, induce homotopy equivalences of the associated classifying spaces. Or if we have equivalences of categories, then they also induce homotopy equivalences of classifying spaces. So, okay, adjunctions of categories or functors, whatever we will say. Okay. On top of equivalence, of those categories. So this is adjunctions and even equivalence said so they also induce yeah. this is just from definition. Okay. 
So here are two quick things I would do on the medium stop today. So yeah, phi zero of C is what? Maybe it could be an example. So phi zero of C is just objects in set of objects in C modulo this equivalence relation where you identify two if uh, this equivalence uh, relation generated by uh, this fact that two objects are equivalent if there is a morphism between them. So, and, uh, Identification C, C prime with the Markism. between C and C prime. So I'll let you think about it. It's kind of reasonably easy. The next one needs some more thought. But okay. So let's say that your category C is connected means uh, between any two objects, if not directly, there is a possibly some zigzag of morphisms that connects them. Yeah. So that would mean. Morphisms connecting them. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. So then, phi one c, which would, by the way, mean phi one of b f c, and with any base point, c is connected, so it doesn't matter. So I'll leave out the base point. So just write phi one b c. Okay. Then phi one b c has the following description. So first look at one skeleton, it's a CW complex BC. So look at one skeleton means uh, this union of all one simply seed and simply seed of lower dimensions with the subspace topology. Yeah. One skeleton. One simplicity and all the zero simplicity. Okay, so how could it look like? Maybe something like this. Let's say there are all these. So zero simplicity would be coming the way these are uh, from vertices. Yeah, the C C W structure that we have put here, without being uh, explicit. So, it's mm, too symmetric now. Go here. here. So, possibly, let's say all the is connected. So, there are going to be morphisms, no matter which two points you choose. If not directly, there should be some way to reach them. Yeah, from between any two points. Possibly, let's say we have this example, and there is a possibility that between two objects there are more than one morphism. So for example, maybe there are two here. Okay. Possible. 
So one is skeleton depending on morphisms will look like something like this. Yeah, I don't know. You can draw some more. Well, so that's how one skeleton will look like. Yeah, so, uh, so one skeleton is, is think of it as a graph. So it is a graph. Yeah. Where you allow these things between two vertices, there could be many edges. The graph. Yeah. And for this, so its fundamental group you know basically uh, it would be a free group on these two generators in some some sense. Yeah. Graph and its fundamental group. It's well known. So I'll let you remember that. It's free between these two, with these two generators. So this graph would still be there in BC. And using this, there is this description of its fundamental group. So here, yeah, so this is not a tree. So choose a maximal tree. Again, a bit of exercise that is possible to choose. Now for Pi 1 BC, we choose the maximal tree. In this graph, let's call it gamma. Okay. And what we do uh, from this maximal tree, yeah, so okay, this is just a, is an exercise using maybe John's lemma, this maximal tree in here, in this graph. So, yeah. So here is this uh, presentation for fundamental group of uh, B1 or uh, this uh, BC. Okay. Professor, we shall wrap up now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it will just give me two three minutes. Yeah. It's okay. Sure. Sure. Add generators. So you take yeah, all morphisms. In C and following relation. Are these two kinds? So T is one for each T in. So this T means uh, an edge in this maximal tree. This, this maximal tree, maximal tree, let's say T in gamma. So for each edge there, you ident we identify that. In a way, it's like saying uh, you can shrink edge edge if they are. Uh, I mean. Just the edge is standing alone, you can shrink them. This is one, and of course, identities are there for each object. There are also one. And the other relation is this. So we have F, G. So these have to be uh, uh, composable, would be. Uh, one has to be careful. I think it should be G composed with F. Yeah. So uh, here, they say they said generators. We, yeah. Think of them. So there's three generators, these elements coming from morphisms, and these are the relations. Yeah. So identify them. Uh, 
composable aerobes. So these two give us a presentation and here is a quick exercise which I would let you think. So then I stop there. Okay. Phi 0 BG is 0. Phi 1 BG is G. So these two are kind of EG. Okay. And then Phi I B, BG. So that, that, that means this is connected. Yeah. If you start with group G and then go through this. 0. So this needs work. So we we'll try to read about it. Yeah. So uh, maybe at the moment I'll stop here. Okay. Yeah. Are there any questions? So basically, this is a kg one space, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this is happening because you're taking G to be a discrete group. If you if you would have taken it to be a topological group yeah with, then uh, yeah then it's, it's difficult it, to compute right yeah then it's difficult actually uh, then basically then bg is already quite rich in some sense like all these uh, classifying spaces like uh, for example you take gl infinity r real numbers then it's grassman real grassmannians yeah and these are uh, it's homotopy groups or whatever they are it's connected so one is okay but others yeah so yeah if we don't take discrete one then that's what gives us all the things that we have in top uh, classical topology or classical uh, this basic homotopy theory of classical groups that we know there is a question by Bidhan he's asking uh, are there any reference uh okay that's um, so there is this book by weibel one should be a little bit careful in the sense um, it's a big book so i was very happy to look at it but then i found that it's basically even within a given section the book is all over the place but it's actually very good so if you peacefully patiently go through it it's a very good one single spot where you can get all the things and he gives lots of references yeah I think it's one of the best recent books in some sense, and it, it, it supersedes all the earlier books that we used to run through. Yes, maybe I can try to see it. I think that's written on our web, website also. Yep. Okay, yeah, so it's that one. Uh, if there are no more questions, then we shall stop the session now. Thank you, Professor, for this yeah, uh, insightful can I, can I lecture. Ask, yeah. Can I ask uh, did you know most of these things Did I just repeat or how was it uh, about uh, like are you asking about the audience or okay yeah whoever can tell because I mean I would like to skip lots of things otherwise I would be stuck with two more lectures at the most I think I would say I would try to finish in the two lectures as much as I can so okay with answers new to him Oh, it's new to him. Okay. How about others? Anyway, the point is, see, uh, at some point we have to go back and try to go through them these details anyway. Yeah. So, okay. Let's see how far we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Thank you for this lecture, Professor. I think uh, this amalgamation of category theory with topological space and borrowing these properties for them is going to be helpful. Uh, even if they're not going to follow the category theories. Uh, yeah, so I mean, therefore, in fact, whatever comes next, I, I don't think you can avoid this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I, I mean, so, embrace and possibly go through these details, not just listen. Yeah. And it, yeah. Okay. So, All right, then let's we'll stop here. See you next week.